Today I'd like to share with you one of my passions, my passion for education and how each and every one of us can make an impact on each student, one student at a time. First we have to talk about perception, the perception of education. Right now I want you to think about that. Your perception of teaching, is it a positive one? How about your perception about student learning? How positive is that? More importantly for each and every one of you, perception can become reality. And that perception can have a lasting impact on our most precious commodity in the United States and the world. And that's our children. That can't continue. So let me share one little thing about myself. I'm a former middle school and high school math teacher. Yes, math, but that's not the crazy part. I'm not crazy because I teach. I'm crazy because I love it. So when we're talking about teaching, I want to share with you something that really impacted me a few years ago. For the last 15 years, I've had the opportunity of actually meeting and speaking with the National Teacher of the Year. This person usually is one of the most dynamic, excited individuals who represents the teaching profession. But I met Anthony Mullen in 2010. He was the 2009 Teacher of the Year. The unique part about Anthony, he actually was more soft-spoken and a little bit more calm, but very determined about what his message was about. And when he spoke to student teachers, and he spoke to people in the community, and he came and spoke to the student teachers on my campus, he had a clear, deliberate message that we can reach and impact each and every child, and that each child is that important. And then we can make an impact, a lasting impact, on each and every one of them. And that's something I've never forgotten. And I want to thank Anthony for that. So when we're talking about teaching, there are three important features that I want you to consider. First, we tend to teach as we were taught. Second, we expect our children to be taught as we were taught. And third, we fear our children are not being taught as we were taught. See, as adults, as parents, it really terrifies us when we find out our children are learning different things than we learned. And that the expectations for our children are much different than, we, than they were 30 years ago. But as educators, what are we asked to do? Increase standards, raise expectations, increase test scores, increase achievement. See, this is a contradiction in what we're doing. This is very difficult. So what can be done about it? For the next few minutes, I want to share a few quotes with you that I hope can actually impact our future and create a list for you that can actually frame the future of education for the entire world. Let's start with teaching. To me, the sole hope of human salvation lies in teaching. Each and every one of you, today, tomorrow, the next day, will have a teachable moment. The question I ask each and every one of you is, will you take that opportunity to teach somebody? We all have that opportunity. Learning. Education is the kindling of a flame, not a filling of a vessel. How will you spark and ignite learning in somebody today? How will you ignite learning in a child? You see, learning is key because we need to focus on 21st century learning, not on 20th century teaching and education. We have to make a change. Reacting. Life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. How do you react to 21st century technology? Have you ever heard of Wolfram Alpha? It's an application, a free application on the internet, on handheld devices, that allows you to solve a math problem. The best part, you can actually see a step-by-step -step process of how to solve that problem. The only problem for some adults, it actually scares us because it gives our children the answer. Now, is that such a bad thing? Are we afraid of technology and how it's going to impact our children? Adapting. No one will live all of his life in the world in which he was born, and no one will die in the world in which he worked in his maturity. The calculator. The CFX 
9850 graphing calculator was developed in the mid-1990s. Three-color graphing calculator, unbelievable technology, put in the palm of a kid's hands, scared the daylights out of adults. Why? Because many of you have heard this. Adults were saying, but you know what? We're not always going to have a calculator in your hand. You won't always have one to use. Really? How many of you in the audience right now don't have in the power of your hand a calculating device? How many people watching this video don't have access to a calculating device right in front of them? Can we continue to say those things? Can we continue to hold back our children and their progress with that technology right in front of their faces? Are we saying those things for our benefit? Are we truly saying it for theirs? We can't continue to hold them back. Originality. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. We can't stifle originality. So here's my question. Apple or Android? Do you care? Because I assure you, our young generation, they don't care. They have their own preferences and privileges. They get to do what they want at times. But I want to know whether you pick your handheld device because of what your child uses, or do they pick their device because of what you use? Does it really even matter? Each and every one of you right now, did you use your handheld device today to access the internet, check email, send a message, or maybe you just played your favorite game, your favorite app? Did you? Could you use that five years ago? Did you do the exact same thing five years ago on a handheld device? Most of you probably didn't. But that's not the real problem. Can you truly imagine what it'll be like in five years? Because I can't. More importantly, can you imagine what it'll be like for our children in five years? Well, the one that really bothers me the most, are we going to stop our children from advancing and learning by not letting them access the power of the technology in five years? Will we be the problem by impeding their progress? Talent. Talent is like electricity. We don't understand electricity. We use it. Talent. How are you going to inspire talent in young people today, tomorrow, and the next day? What are you going to do? More importantly, how are you going to demonstrate this? I'll give you an idea. As a college professor, there is one required assignment in each one of my classes. It's called a demo slam. Stu students are required to actually demonstrate a piece of technology in three minutes. A handheld device, computer technology, whatever they'd like. Because, of course, I want them to see what each other, what they're actually using. They can learn from each other. But that's not really the reason. I do it because I need to learn what they're using. I have no idea, and without them telling me, how in the world am I going to find out? Because as adults, we're not going to ask. Try the demo slam. Write answers. I was gratified to be able to answer promptly. I said I didn't know. What do you do when you don't know? You Google it. Our kids Google it. The power of the internet, the power of the technology, it's so exciting what we have on our fingertips right now. Can you imagine what Mark Twain would have done with Google? What an amazing environment we live in right now. But how are we going to harness technology for teaching and learning? So I provide you a list. A list of the things that will actually help you impact the future of education. We all need to promote teaching. It's critical. It has the greatest impact on learning inside a classroom. We have to support student learning. We have to ignite learning. We have to ignite what's inside each and every child. React. But you need to react positively. The positive reactions of each and every one of you can literally change education in our society. We have to be willing to adapt and not just think about 20th century learning and education but adapt to what's going on in the 21st century. Important. We must encourage originality. We must stimulate that in each and every person, each and every child. We can't stifle it. And we need to inspire our talent. 
create our talent, build our talent, but more importantly, inspire it and not hold it back. Please remember, please, you don't always have to be right. So here's what I want to do before I end my presentation. I want to bring back Anthony J. Mullen. Because here the, here's the rest of the story. When I met Anthony, that soft-spoken, retired teacher, excuse me, retired police officer turned special education teacher, when I met him, he did his first presentation to student teachers in a soft voice. And here's about what he said. He was on a call with his partner, called to a, an apartment building in an urban setting. And as they drove up really fast, they saw on the ledge a young girl who they said was about ready to jump. They did what they were supposed to do. They ran up to her floor, got to her window, and tried to talk her out. They were waiting for backup, trying to convince her this was not the right, not the right avenue. But she jumped. And so did Anthony. He actually jumped after her. Somehow he grabbed her, grabbed her by the leg. She went out. He was left out of the window. And by some miracle, his partner grabbed him. And he said at that moment, all he could think about, while he's hanging over the edge of the window, and he's got her, and she looks back up, that the last thing that she was going to see before her life ended was his face. And he made a decision that every single child and every single student at that point, because he retired from becoming a police officer and became a teacher to help every single student because he believes that we can teach one student at a time. So please remember we need to change because if you change nothing, if we change nothing, absolutely nothing will change. And I believe each and every one of us has that power to dramatically impact education for our future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.